Hello party peoples. Today I'm going to show you how to make the tastiest prime rib you've ever had. I'm going to teach you all about meat selection, how to season it, how to prep it, how to cook it, and how to eat it. It's going to be super tasty and your whole family's going to love it. Even though it's 2020 and you're probably going to be by yourself. Like me. Let's talk about meat. Um, this here is a three bone rib rack. One, two, three. It's amazing. I like it. It is a two bone rib rack. If you can count. One, two. I'm smart. I graduated school. When you're looking for a ribeye, I look at two things. Center, which is called the eye, and then there's the cap on the outside here. To me, the cap is the best part of the ribeye, so I try to find a piece that has the largest cap attached to it. The other thing that you wanna look at is marbling. As you can see here, the marbling is the amount of fat that runs through the meat. Um, you want to find lots of little mini strains of marbling. So do your best to find a chunk of meat that has the most amount of fat running through the, the muscles as you can. There's not much that really needs to be done with this. A very large fat chunk here. Some people like to cut into that. I usually don't because it's a very big hard fat. It's just not going to cook out very easily. Up to you if you want to trim it down a little bit. I'm going to leave it the way it is for now for simplicity's sake. I am going to take off what looks like a nice healthy fat layer on top. This piece. I know I just said I wasn't going to cut any fat off, but I didn't see this until later. So, sue me. Second thing I like to do is, I'm a big fan of leaving the bones on the meat because the bones are flavorful. However, when a, the bones are attached, it causes the meat to cook a little unevenly. And in addition to that, it makes it harder to cut after you've already made this thing. So what I'm actually gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the bones off and I'm gonna truss it right back onto the meat. Look at the bones while the dog drinks and ruins my audio. Let's give Tank a second to finish drinking. You done? Yeah, you're done. Thanks, dick. Let's cut as close to the bones as possible. Very simple. I'm gonna go right down the meat line. Stay close to the bones. All the little notches. There you go, perfect. Later on, these are gonna be very tasty. Before I truss it, I'm gonna go ahead and salt our bad boy a little bit. What salting does is basically adds two things, flavor. We're also gonna dry brine it for one day. Salt on the inside of the bones. Truss, very simple. You're just gonna take your twine and we are going to tie it up around and through each bone. Start with an initial tie. Okay, and let's run through our two bones. Done. Trust right back onto the bones. We're gonna put this in the fridge and we're gonna let it dry brine overnight. Um, what dry brining does is it takes out a little bit of moisture out of the meat and makes the, uh, the meat more tender. Something with enzymes and tenderness, I don't know. It's what the rich, fancy chefs do. Let's throw it in the fridge. <laughs> that never happened. Five second roll. <laughs> Okay, now we need to season the meat. To season, I like to make a seasoned butter. Pretty easy, we're gonna take this butter and we're gonna lather it all over this big old piece of meat. Starting off, got about a tablespoon of pepper. 
just about a teaspoon of salt. Remember, we just salt brined that piece of meat, so it's already got a good amount of salt on it, so I don't wanna go too crazy. Teaspoon. These are thyme leaves. I would say this is about maybe a tablespoon of thyme. Lastly, garlic. I love garlic. Make sure that you get the fresh garlic, not the kind that was pre-chopped that comes in a jar. You really want the freshest stuff possible for your prime rib. I mean, it is Christmas. You should really get the nice fresh stuff. Yep, and then you're gonna mix it all together. This is one stick of butter. I'm gonna use the baking juices to create an au jus. Here we go. I let it sit in the fridge overnight, a little bit over 24 hours. It makes the meat more tender. So if you can feel it, it feels more tender and it's gonna be way more flavorful than if we just cooked it fresh. Next thing we need to do is butter our baby. Full handful of butter and just slather it on. You also want to try to get lots of butter inside the bones. Would this have been a lot easier to do this first and then tie it together? Yeah, probably. Am I an idiot for not doing it that way? Yeah, probably. All right. All that's left is to throw this thing in the oven. And uh, I look like I jerked off an elephant. Okay. I put it on a metal baking tray because, again, I'm going to use this tray to make au jus later. Normally, what you could do is put a mirepoix into the baking tray. That's a bougie ass cooking term that means carrots, celery, and onions. I'm gonna go ahead and say that the mirepoix doesn't really add any flavor. Is that true? No, that's a lie. What actually happened is I went to the grocery store and forgot to get the celery, carrots, and onions. So I'm sticking to it. Mirepoix don't really do much. You can just go in and make a sauce without it. <laughs> Up. So we're gonna go ahead and throw this bad boy in at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. I have a digital meat thermometer that's stabbed right into the pee hole of this prime rib. We're shooting for 110 degrees. That could take anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. It depends how big your rib is. Size matters. Here we go. Say bye bye. Okay guys, we're at 111. Make a wish. I wish that the COVID I have doesn't kill me. <laughs> okay, so we're at about 111 degrees. Our goal is to get up to 125 degrees, but I need to bake the outside to form a nice crust now. Let's crank this mother trucker up to as high as your oven can go. 550, perfect. We're gonna wait for the oven to preheat. In the meantime, this boy is going to cool down a little bit. Let's get our crusty crust. Oh, it's hot. Oh, it's hot. That's really hot. Oh, God. Oh, God. Ah, 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 it's hot. Get in there. So I went ahead and took this baby out at 118 degrees. It's gonna to continue to cook all the way up to 125 degrees, which is a perfect medium rare. When cooking a rib roast, you really shouldn't go more cooked than a medium. If anybody asks for you to cook a steak more than medium, then open up Google Maps, and then have them find their closest Denny's and hope that their car blows up on the way there. While our rib roast is resting on the side, we're gonna make ourselves a jus. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove our ribs from the meat, and I'm gonna add them into our pot here for extra flavor. Two tablespoons of flour. This is gonna thicken up our jus. Mix it along with the fat. Creating ourselves a little roux. Make sure you scrape the bottom because you want to get all the yummy bits. Once that's well collaborated, I'm gonna add some wine. Red wine, ooh. This is just a cheap cab, costs like six bucks. I spent all of last year's YouTube money on that bottle of cab. We're gonna cook it in the pan and cook all the alcohol out of it. To test to make sure you're cooking all the alcohol out of it, if you have a small child lying around somewhere, you can hold his face directly over the fumes. If he gets a little loopy, you've done it right. Okay, now that the booze is cooked out of it, add in a stalk of your choice. This is a 
homemade chicken stock, most people would use a uh, beef stock, even a veggie stock. I'm using chicken stock because that's what I had lying around. If you want a recipe on how to make a homemade chicken stock, Take a look at the link in the top right corner. Okay, we're just gonna keep cooking this out, bring it to a boil, reduce it, and give it a taste. This is the consistency that I like to go with. As you can see, it's it's not so much of like a juicy au jus, it's got a little bit of viscosity to it. That's two S's, four C's, viscosity. Taste for seasoning and make sure it's good. That's really hot. It only took one Jew to make this beautiful Jew. I'm just kidding, I'm not Jewish. But I do love the Jews. Shit. I overcooked it. Um buy a lot. I kind of hate myself right now. I should be the one who jumps into the car and blows up. Let this be a lesson to a lot of you cooks out there. Sometimes you can make a YouTube video, you can focus too hard on trying to be funny when you're really not, and you could ruin the results of your entire Christmas dinner. This is very on brand, and this is why I'm alone. Not because I have COVID, but because I can't do anything that I say I can do correctly. Okay, maybe it's not the worst thing in the world. I should just rename this video, trying to cook medium rare but ending up at medium. So let's give this a shot. It's actually really, really good. It's extremely juicy, it's very flavorful. Um, I am biting out of the most medium part of the entire thing, but luckily the cap has the most fat in it, so it's probably gonna be a little forgiving of this dumb dumb head. Mmm, it's really tasty. This is totally passable. Anybody who likes steak would think that this is really good because it's very tender. It's the slow cooking that makes it more tender and the one day dry age. I may screw up the temperature, but I'll find other ways to make up for it. When you think about it, it's a lot like life. It's like when you go to college and you get a liberal arts degree, $120,000 worth of tuition payments that are never gonna go away but at least you explored yourself. That's it for today, guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for making it this far. I'm curious to know what you think about the new style of videos I've been posting. I've been told that they're not funny and that they're boring and way too serious. If that's true, let me know. I'm a sucker with zero dignity. I'll go right back to the other bullshit if you want me to. But happy holidays. Make sure you stay safe, wear your mask, and drugs are okay as long as you have portion control.